In this video, I will talk about the capacity of point-to-point -point channels with multiple antennas, in particularly channels called SIMO and MISO channels. So in my previous videos, I have been talking about a system where you have one transmit antenna that transmits to a receive antenna at another location. And this is called a single input, single output channel because of the single input antenna that transmits and the single output antenna that receives. And we have characterized the capacity, which is log two or one plus a signal to noise ratio measured in bit per symbol. And this signal to noise ratio is a transmit power Q measured in energy per symbol. And then it's the absolute value square of G, which is the channel. And then we divide that by N naught, which is a noise variance. And we will now generalize this to some other cases. The first thing we will consider is a single input multiple output or SIMO channel, where we have one transmit antenna and multiple receive antennas. Another scenario we will look at is when we have multiple transmit antennas and one receive antenna. This is called the multiple input single output or MISO channel. And there is also the opportunity of having multiple inputs and multiple outputs. So multiple transmit antennas and multiple receive antennas. This is called the MIMO channel and we will look closer at that one in another video. We will now look closely at the SIMO channel with one transmit antenna and M receive antennas. And this transmit antenna is sending a signal X that propagates to each of the M antennas at the receiver in the same way as if there were only one antenna. So Y1, which is a received signal at the first antenna, is going to be X multiplied with the channel response. And we call it G1 here because we want to signify which antenna it is to. And then we add N1, which is a noise at the first antenna. We have the same thing for the second antenna. Y2 is equal to X multiplied with G2, which is a channel response to the second antenna, plus N2, which is a noise at that antenna. And each of these noise terms is independent complex Gaussian distributed and have n not as variance. And it goes on like this all the way down to ym which is received at the nth antenna. It's convenient to represent the channel using vectors. So we create a received signal vector y that contains y1 to ym. It's an m-dimensional vector. We create a channel vector g with g1 to gm and a noise vector n with n1 to nm. In that way, the received signal vector y can be written as g times x plus n. And everything is vectors here except x. That is the scalar information signal that have a power q measured in energy per symbol. Since the received signal y is a summation to vectors, we can show it geometrically like this, where we first take the channel vector g, we are rescaling it using the information signal x, and then to that one we are adding a random noise vector n, and that gives us y, which is our received signal. And since we know that all the information is in the same direction as g in this vector space, everything that is pointing in other direction than g can only be noise. Part of the noise is also pointing in the same direction as g, but most of it will point in other directions. So what you want to do at the receiver side is to project y back into the direction of the channel. G. So we should project the received signal y onto the channel vector g. And in order to do that mathematically, we create a length one version of g that we call v. So it's g divided by the norm of g. And then we take inner product between y and v in order to know how long will the projected version of y be when it's projected onto g. And this projection is also called receive combining in wireless communications. And in particular, this type of receive combining where you are projecting it down to the channel vector is called maximum ratio combining because you are maximizing the signal to noise ratio. In this way, you get all of the received signal power left, but you only get some of the noise power because the rest of it that is pointing in other directions disappears in the projection. By taking the inner product between y and the combined vector v, we are effectively taking a received signal and project it to a scalar. So we are now effectively receiving only one value as if we had one antenna, but it's the best combination of the different antennas in reality. And we already know how to deal with a system with one receive antenna. And this is effectively the same thing. So we look at the transmitter signal x, it's multiplied with the constant, which was before the channel response for a particular antenna. Now it's a combination of all of them. It's the norm of g when we are using maximum ratio combining. And then to that we add noise, and now it's not 
just one noise source is the noise vector n taken with the inner product with the maximum ratio combining vector. And that is also something that has variance and not in a Gaussian distribution. That means that we can take the same capacity formula as before. The capacity becomes log 2 of 1 plus the power q of the signal x. And then we take the constant that is multiplied with, which is a norm of the channel vector g. We square it and we divide by the noise variance n0. If we compare the channel capacity in the size case as we had before with the capacity in the SIMO case, the only thing that's different is that before we had the absolute value square of g, which was the channel response for our one receive antenna. And now we get the squared norm of the channel vector, which is effectively the sum of the absolute values squared of each of the channel responses to each of the m receive antennas. So if all of these absolute value square are the same, we will get an m times stronger signal and we will never get something that is worse than having only one receive antenna. So that is the benefit, the type of beamforming gain that we are getting, but at the receiver side we get to something that is roughly m times stronger than when you have only one receive antenna. We will now shift focus to the MISO case. We have multiple transmit antennas, m is a number, and we have one receive antenna. And for each of these transmit antennas, you are sending a different signal now. x1 from the first antenna, x2 from the second antenna, and xm from antenna m. Each one of them are multiplying once again with the channel response, g1 for the first antenna, g2 for the second, gm for antenna number m. And then all of these contributions are added together over the wireless channel, and then we are adding one noise term at the receiver side, which we call n. And that gives us our received signal y. So y is equal to the summation of all of the antennas. We get gm times xm plus the noise n. It's convenient to represent also this channel using vectors. So we can put all of the transmitted signals, x1 to xm, in a vector that we call x, the transmit vector. And then we put all other channels, g1 to gm, in a vector g. And that means that now the received scalar y is going to be the inner product between the transmit vector x and g conjugate. So you get g transpose x, that is the result that we have, plus the noise n. And by taking this inner product, we are looking at which part of the transmit vector x is pointing in the same direction as the channel vector g with a conjugate. And everything that is pointing in our direction will be projected away because we are taking the transmit vector and project it onto the channel. And that means that there is no point of transmitting anything in any other direction than in the one pointed out by the channel vector g. And we should notice that the direction of a channel vector has nothing to do with any physical directions or there is at least no simple connection between them with any angles or anything like this. This is an m-dimensional vector space and we're talking about the directions of vectors. So what we should do is that we should take our transmit vector x and we should divide it into two parts. One is something that we call a pre-coding vector. That is something that points in the direction of the channel. So it's a normalized version of the channel. So we take g star divided by the norm of g. So that is a length one vector pointing in the same direction as g conjugate of g star. And to that one we multiply one information signal, x tilde here, which have once again a power q measured in energy per symbol. In principle, we could have taken some other pre vector pointing in other direction than the channel, but then we would just lose some of our transmit power on the way. So this one that is maximizing the signal to noise ratio is called maximum ratio transmission. With maximum ratio transmission, the inner product between the pre vector and the channel with the conjugate is going to be only the norm of the channel vector g. So the received signal y is the norm of the channel vector multiplied with the signal x tilde having power q plus noise with n0 as its variance. And this is exactly the same of case that we arrived at when dealing with the SIMO channel. So the capacity is also the same in this case. Log 2 or 1 plus q multiplied with the squared norm of channel vector g divided by n0, which is the variance of the noise. So the capacity expression tells us that we get a roughly m times larger SNR when we are transmitting from m antennas or receiving using m antennas. But this gain is achieved in different ways. So when we transmit from m antennas, we are transmitting in a directed way using beamforming towards the user location. And that means that the pre-coding vector 
with maximum rate transmission, make sure that the M copies of the signal are adding constructively at the receiver side without having to use more power than before. And when we are receiving with M antennas, we're actually transmitting from one antenna in an omnidirectional way, but we are observing different copies of it, multiplied with different channel responses. We add them constructively using maximum ratio combining, but the noise terms of the different antennas is not constructively added, not destructively either. We just get the same noise variance as before. So in both transmission and reception using M antennas, we get the beamforming gain that is roughly proportional to the number of antennas.